Thanks. Hi guys, how's everybody doing? Are you guys having fun? It's Wednesday. I think we're like almost halfway, depending if you're going to the design summit. Uh, so my name is Cynthia Thomas. I'm a systems engineer at Mitokura. Thanks so much for coming here. I think we have about 20 minutes. So we're going to talk about scaling the Internet of Things and how to leverage OpenStack and Mitonet. And Mitonet's an open source project, uh, a Neutron plugin tied into OpenStack since about the B release. Um, so just show of hands, how many people are implementing some kind of IoT rather at home or, you know, or at work? Very few. Okay. Well. You know, upon us all, the age of the age of the Internet of Things is is coming, right? So the expectation is having 50 billion devices by 2020, and in reality, 2020 it kind of looks far away, but it's only four years away. So um, we've got to figure out how we're going to scale and get there. Um, you know, so Internet of Things, it's it's not a new concept because it's sort of had a, been a buzzword for a while, maybe even 20 years, starting with RFIDs on tags and keeping track of inventory. Uh, but now it's moved across different verticals, like healthcare. We've heard a lot about you know, energy grids and you know, smart cities that we heard in Austin, uh, some of the keynotes, um, and spreading across uh, things like that. So, well, I wish you could see my slide, but it's taken a while to come up. Did I block myself out? Is it Which one was that? Sorry. Well, given uh, I'm from a virtualization network virtualization company, what I care about is oh, what does what does Internet of Things and the devices do to the network? So, in terms of how do you scale when you have so many devices you're dealing with and you have to have some kind of unique identifier on them? How do they scale with current infrastructure we have today? And of course, what we all think about and probably the adoption affecting uh, concern the most is security risks. So, Meternet, as you know it or may not, I'll remind you <laughs> if you don't. It's a ner network virtualization overlay. Uh, so that wh what that means is we're providing layer two, three, four networking services uh, and leveraging VXLAN tunneling to go across east-west traffic uh, amongst a digital or, or distributed uh, BGP gateway to get in and out of the cloud. So we're, we're a Neutron plugin. Uh, we've been involved since uh, the B release with OpenStack, so long time um, contributor and project. Uh, our, our founders and chief architects actually come from the likes of Amazon, their expertise being a distributed system. So the way they architected Meternet, for those who aren't familiar, is uh, there's no single points of failure or bottlenecks. So the goal is high availability and, and providing a distributed system. Um, so we started about six years ago. Uh, Midokura is, was the organization um, producing Midonet originally. And then the name actually means uh, green cloud. So Midori is green, and cloud is like this, it's a little mashup word of meaning green cloud. So how can we make money? Or, you know, now, now we care maybe even about environmental uh, aspects too. Um, but as of the Paris Summit in, in 2014, we actually went open source. So the, the code is completely available online on GitHub. Uh, and then we, have, of course, have our enterprise offering, which I'll give you a glimpse of today, too. So given we are uh, a Neutron plugin, we are providing the layer 2, 3, 4 networking services, um, a host of which are listed here. It goes above and beyond even OpenStack as well. Um, but doing everything in a completely distributed manner, and that's what makes our, our solution unique. But for those who are familiar with the, the concepts from Neutron, uh, it's providing all these, these network functionality. Taking a look at what the architecture looks like, um, we eliminate the, the requirement for the Neutron network node, for those who might be familiar with previous reference implementations. Uh, so we have a single agent that sits in user space. Uh, we, you, you deploy that across the compute hosts. We actually have this distributed gateway as well. We're completely hardware agnostic, so we just require IP t connectivity between the compute hosts and gateway nodes. Uh, and we leverage not just VXLAN or GRE to deliver packets uh, east-west as well as north-south towards the gateways. Uh, as you might notice, there's no, sing there's no controller here. We consider ourselves controllerless. So all the intelligence is at the edge. So the, the agents at the edge have the intelligence they need to provide these networking services um, for the VMs or, or various workloads, which we'll see you know, evolving now to containers and such. Um, so keep going. So would you like some Mirai with th that IoT? I, d I don't know if you guys recall, just last Friday, um, Mirai, which is a, if you haven't heard, other than the Toyota car, is actually also a malware that's, that inhabited IoT bots. And actually, to, it attacked uh, DIN DNS 
uh, in the U.S. So it took down, you know, Twitter, GitHub, Spotify. These things are very important to us. All right, GitHub. We we work on GitHub, and I work with Spotify. I need that to get in the mode when I'm at my desk. So this this is overall obviously a performance affecting. Um, so of course we uh, of course we don't we don't want that. We we need security, and that that's um, what's holding back adoption. Given, as I mentioned, the intelligence for Mironet happens at the edge, that in turn means also the security that we provide. We're removing the need for a service appliance so, and hairpinning, for example. So we're doing things more efficiently by handling things right at the edge. So what that means is things like security, security group policies, firewalls as a service, these are all implemented right at the edge before you even leave the, the compute host. And that will apply, as you'll see, um, as we expand portfolio towards IoT-related functionality as well. Um, what's also special about the way Mironet has implemented security groups is you get even more options than you get with the basic Neutron security groups. So Neutron security groups are basically enabling whitelist type um, rules. So I'm allowing this traffic to pass. Um, but Mironet lets you have other actions uh, and capabilities. So you can link various chains together. These are more of the lower level constructs. Um, so if I, I'm probably going a little bit fast about these kinds of things. So we'll be available to talk uh, more deeply about these constructs that we implement. Um, but you can do things and link, like linking chains um, and security policies. You can do drop, reject, and, and various different options. So it goes above and beyond the, the basic security options that you have today with Neutron. So how this applies to IoT, Let, let's take uh, industrial IoT as one example. Um, so this might involve you know, having bots and, and sensors uh, on, a operate, on a factory floor. Uh, and this is basically uh, increasing the amount of traffic that's happening, obviously. So the number of endpoints from a network perspective, even the traffic that's traversing the, um, the, the network, and, and then therefore there's more flows to deal with. Um, and obviously, application monitoring, care more about, caring more about higher layer services from a network perspective. Um, and of course, leveraging things like OpenStack in the back end for analytics uh, with Mironet. Um, so this example kind of gives you kind of a, maybe a higher level view of things that can be applied from a networking perspective to implement security uh, more at the edge. Uh, and prevent, you know, minimize like the fault domain. Um, so here we're depicting sort of the IT uh, and OT, you know, operations technology, that would be typically implemented in an IIoT uh, environment. Uh, so these sensor bots, you know, it starts right from, right from the factory floor. So these sensor bots might have a certain protocol that has to be understood. Um, this layer in between is where we want, want to fill the gap between IT and OT. Uh, we can call that like the fog layer. We're not, we're not getting cloud now, we're just getting fog. So maybe like on-premise on the floor. Um, so how about aggregating those, those protocols and traffic flows that are happening, um, as well as providing po um, security policy as well, and dealing with application monitoring to understand uh, what's happening with the network. Beyond, and from a network perspective beyond that, there's other things that are important as well. So it, it's, it's a more challenging solution from a network perspective because you have to have a much more um, feature-rich set of functionality. Uh, so for example, WAN to go to some back end. You know, encryption, of course, is important. Uh, maybe, maybe for inbound tra traffic flow, it might be load balancing. Um, so these types of things are combining and stretching a network solution to expand from right from the factory floor to a, a back end OpenStack cloud. Um, of course, monitoring is important from end to end, so providing the visibility of what those traffic flows are as we grow to 50 billion devices. Um, and then, of course, the, the utmost importance, which, which we feel um, that has been inhibiting the adoption of being security. Everybody want, cares about security. So I'll just give you a glimpse of what Meta Manager looks like. Meta Manager is the GUI interface uh, that gives you an overall view of what's happening um, in the cloud where MetaNet is providing the networking services. Um, so I'll go through a demo, and you get a, a better look. Uh, but it's basically providing flow history, giving you the, ability, um, the availability to search on um, an isolated network or a tenant project, as we know from OpenStack, um, whatever services might be applied. So that could be load balancers of service, security groups, uh, and things like that. You're getting visibility into every single flow and searchability to, to minimize what you're looking at. So you guys want to see a little bit more of what that looks like? Or? All right, let's just switch it up here. Hopefully. 
hopefully that's uh, visible to you. So, so I'll just give you an idea. Those who are, are uh, MeterNet users might already be familiar with this. Uh, our RESTful API is available and to be configured directly with our RESTful API. We have a MeterNet CLI, so you can take a look at the constructs from a networking perspective that are part of the cloud. So here you can list the routers that could have been created um, rather through OpenStack or via our API. As you can see, these, there's these chains and rules that are applied per router that are listed here. Um, so that's sort of how we implement various things like security groups, firewalling, natting, stateful, stateful firewalls as well. Um, each router can have you know, routes depending. I mentioned that we do BGP, so the external routes can have, the external router would have uh, BGP routes that are learned on the router. And these are all logical constructs, keep in mind as well. Um, so it's not a, a physical appliance sitting somewhere. So each, each of the routers has ports as well as bridges, which you could connect, um, uh, basically, as you would know, as a subnet. Um, so these would be created through OpenStack, the Neutron API, or otherwise. And each of them have ports as well obviously. Uh, and they would align even to VMs, potentially, or containers or pods uh, and some of the, the Kubernetes integrations that we have. So even on each bridge, we can check these ports. And you know, a typical workflow from OpenStack is when you're, you're launching a VM, the Nova scheduler is going to request a Neutron port. And that's what's landing on one of these bridges here. Um, and then there, we also have visibility into some of the chains, which can be more difficult to read from CLI, but it is available that way. Uh, and this is all part of the open source um, code that's available on GitHub. So we'll flip over to the MeterNet Manager. Uh, this is part of the enterprise offering. Um, let's see. Yeah. So we'll just log in here. But basically, it's providing a dashboard for all that visibility uh, that you require. So we'll just get logged in and um, check out the network constructs that were created via the MeterNet API. A little bit, there was a slow connection when this is happening. <laughs> this is not uh, indicative of performance. So initial dashboard gives you a big view of the, the things that are important to MeterNet. So host would be your compute host or your gateway nodes within the system. Up is good, green is good. If they were down, not reachable, uh, that they'd be all red. Um, so you get, a dash, you get a basic uh, view right away. You can scroll down, down, down the left-hand side. We have all the constructs that were made. Tunnel zones are our way of registering agents into the MetoNet network. So this is one level of security. You're not going to have some rogue MetoNet agent somewhere. You have to have implemented that and attached it to a tunnel zone and defined it as VXLAN. Next, we have the routers that would have been created via the Neutron API. Uh, so they're all listed here. You can go click deeper into any of them. Um, we have little graphs to show the type of traffic that's happening over a period of time. Uh, and you scroll down further, you can see those things that we saw through the MetaNet CLI, but a little more visually consumable. So you get the ports, you get the routes. Things that are related to whatever network function it is um, are provided to you through the single pane of glass. So they, they obviously, so this is, has like a unique um, user's network. Then as I mentioned, the flow history is what's uh, really important for analytics. Uh, especially as we get many more devices, having the ability f to filter, troubleshoot, uh, and look at the various flows in the network is increasingly important uh, with many more um, things on the, on the Internet of Things devices. So you can filter based on you know, any of the, the expected things you would expect from an IP Ethernet packet, um, the ports, uh, the tenant, and then you can further customize what you're looking at to, so it's a more consumable way through you know, what period of time. So you can customize what you look at, and you can enter that. Um, so this is all part of the analytics uh, portion that's part of the enterprise offering. So it's lever leveraging Elastic Logstash on the back end um, and retrieving these um, flows. So we see there's some spikes here, so that means there's a little bit more traffic there. We get a list of the flows that happened during that period of time. Um, we do this interesting thing at the edge. It's a simulation to determine whether it should be sent or not. Uh, so that simulation is, result, is uh, listed there. But it's just a summary. So you can kind of drag and drop with your mouse on the, on the graphs if you want to like zoom in on a particular time. Uh, and then the, the uh, corresponding flows will show. Uh, so you can drill down a little bit more depending on what you're looking at. Um, so if we go down to a particular flow, we're j we're, right now we're looking at the more summarized entries here, so um, the basic information. 
But we can scroll down, we can drill into a particular flow and see how um, a packet has traversed the logical topology. So that logical topology could be, have very complex uh, network functions in it. So load balancing, uh, firewalls, security groups. And then here we're showing basically the five tuple of the packet. Um, that's showing uh, the, the VMs, just basically the payload of the VXLAN tunnel. So whatever the, the true packet was coming off the VM. Then we also show this flow visualization, which is what's happening uh, on ingress when uh, a workload is entering the cloud. So it's showing you all the logical constructs that may have been uh, constructed and uh, what the path would be for this packet on that. Uh, and you see, you can drill down further and further into what exact rules were applied, uh, whether it was allowed to drop or, or pass. Um, and the highlighted, the highlighted entry actually just shows the, the match. Um, but you can click on the ones that it didn't match and passed over. Um, so that basically shows the, the port it exited, defining it by its UUID. Uh, and so you can get a lot of ton of information on a per entry basis uh, when you're leveraging MetoNet Manager um, for visibility. So this thing makes things exceptionally easy for, for troubleshooting and operation tools. And that's really what the focus was uh, with MetoNet Manager. So uh, that was. I sorry if I went really fast. I was I think I start a little bit late and I want to make sure I finish on time. But that was my, my general summary of what I wanted to present to how to apply um, uh, a neutron plugin, th that being Metonet, to the time when we've got to be ready for all these uh, IoT devices. And starting with a scalable solution we're already familiar with. We know that scales uh, and as the security groups and policy is embedded uh, and being ready for IoT. So that's the goal for, for Metonet. So thanks for your time today. Our booth is just A34, I believe. I like this. So come visit us. Uh, we can drill down further into uh, what we talked about today. And I, I appreciate your time. So thanks for, for coming.